So uh, last week, March 8th, uh, was day one of the Derek Chauvin trial. And as far as my understanding is that the trial is delayed. Um, and the delay is in the jury selection because the defense, the the uh, lawyers that are defending Jer Derek Chauvin, they're trying to remove the third degree murder. Now, before there was an article of the summer where they were even trying to get rid of the second degree. And I think they were just they were just trying to leave it as involuntary manslaughter. And to me, I my my the thought even when they said that oh we're going to say second degree murder was well this should this dude should get first degree this dude should absolutely get first degree um because you you don't sit on somebody's neck for almost 9 minutes for 8 minutes and 46 seconds and not know that you are either going to give them some kind of brain damage by cutting off the oxygen or just flat out kill them. There is no uh, logical way that you can make a claim that, oh man, there a, an adult human being didn't know that if you sit on somebody's neck for eight minutes and 46 seconds, that it would cause this person to die. Now, the reason why they're trying to get all these charges dropped is because they're saying, well, Derek Chauvin actually didn't kill him. Uh, what he did was... Um, you know, something that was completely legal, that was a, a, a maneuver to subdue someone as large and as dangerous as George Floyd. That's what these lawyers are going to try to say. Well, it's been proven, uh, and, and, you know, the media will run interference on this. It's been proven that George Floyd, despite having a, crim a, a criminal record in the past, was reformed, was, you know, a beloved member of the neighborhood, uh, and of the community, he was a guy that was, just, and you know, even the video footage, if you watch the video footage of him getting pulled out of the car, this is not a man that is trying to fight cops or, 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 or is doing anything threatening as it were. This is a man that is genuinely concerned about what's going on. He seems confused. It doesn't seem like the cops are being forthwith. Uh, with what he did and uh, and then you end up they, they drag him across the street to kind of parade this very I mean he's a big dude right but like just because he's a big dude does that mean we have to be terrified of him no we don't uh, you know it, it's 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 why we say don't judge a book by its cover because you don't know this guy you don't know how valuable he is to the community or any of that sort of jazz so uh, he gets paraded around and then you see Derek Chauvin put his knee on his neck and you can hear him say, I can't breathe. And they dismiss that claim. So again, you knew he couldn't breathe, but you didn't do anything about it because you have a racist bias. Oh, big, scary black man. We have to take him down. We have to subdue him because that's the training that we've been given. Uh, that's the implicit racism that is within the force. It's not overt. It's it's subtle. It's in the background, and uh, you know, and and it and now it's getting deadly. So I I think that you can make a case for uh, first degree murder. That you can make a case that he did this knowingly. That you know George Floyd is probably going to die uh, by asphyxiation because there is a large man on his neck. And the defense wants to come out and say, well, he had a heart problem. So he was under some stress and he just couldn't take it. And, 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 you know, oh, he, he changed his medication. Uh, and, 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 you know, he was taking new heart medication. So there were complications. Oh, really? Were, were there complications? Do you think the complication came from a, a, a 200 some odd pound man's neck, uh, knee on, on his neck? Do you think that that was the complication? Cause I, that's kind of what I see as the fucking complication. Oh, but there were side effects. You know, he could have been taking drugs and there were side effects with his medication. Oh, was one of the side effects of police officer kneeling on his neck was that they should put that right on the bottle. You know, hey, this is going to improve your your heart, but it will cause uh, police officers uh, to put their knee on your neck for like eight minutes, 46 seconds, roughly, give or take. We can't be exact about that number, but that is a side effect, you know. 
this is a sidebar. I mentioned this again in a different stream, but I do think it's ridiculous that like they sell pharmaceutical drugs on the television and it's like, oh, this will improve your blood pressure, but side effects may include accidental death. And it's like, what? <laughs> Why is this out of the market? <laughs> You're people are just gonna die, baby. And they're like, Yep, it's a side effect, <laughs> but your blood pressure will be stable. <laughs> That's I feel like that's the same level. It's just like, oh man, this guy changed his heart medication. And he and he might have been taking he might have been doing the marijuanas. And you guys know how those marijuanas can make you believe that you're part of a grander universe and we're all one connected with each other and we should really be made and we're all made out of love and kindness and that's what we should really really be doing for each other we should be taking care of each other we should be loving each other we should create a community that uplifts each other rather than tears each other down that's dangerous uh-oh get that's probably what killed him it was too much love there was too much love in george floyd's system and it and it and it killed him so maybe we should start being more paranoid and hateful like America was built on. So now, uh, you know, what's going on in Minneapolis is pretty standard to um, what happens every time something like this comes out. Uh, Minneapolis and Hennepin County are ready to spend about a million dollars in barricades and police protections. And they've also called in the National Guard. The expectation is a lot of people are going to take to the streets and a lot of people should take to the streets because that's the only reason why Derek Chauvin and his four uh, accomplices who just stood there and watched this man die are on trial right now. It's why any killer cop goes on trial. It's not because the judicial system looks at this and goes, boy, this is terrible. Police officers shouldn't be willy-nilly killing people of color uh, or just killing anybody, period. We really need to look into this. We really need to investigate these cases. And we really need to rethink the way uh, that uh, that policing is structured in America. No, that's not how the justice system operates. The justice system looks at this as an attack on one of their own. Well, one of their own and the system that they're trying to protect is inherently racist um, and is in, inherently unjust because the people that it defends uh, are are legitimate killers. They're not just legitimate killers, but they're also corporations that commit crimes. Uh, they are billionaires that commit crimes, and they all get let go, and it's the workers that suffer. It's the average Americans that suffer. That's what the system is. But when there's an overwhelming amount of people that take to the streets and they say, we are not, we're done with this shit, we're sick of this crap, the amount of people that end up on the streets because of situations like this is scary to the establishment. It's scary to the justice system. It's scary to in inequality. So they have to do something to appease the masses, and they go, well, we'll put this person on trial. Well, then you have shitty defense lawyers that go, no, 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 no. He didn't die because his, you know, there was a, a, a large man on his neck compressing his uh, windpipe and not letting enough oxygen go into his lungs and therefore keeping him alive. No, no, no. It was his other stuff. Uh, and so, you know, this officer that did something terrible, and we all think what he did was terrible, but you should really be let go. When that sort of shit happens, they're like, oh shit. Yeah, if we agree with this, and we're probably going to agree with this, people are going to get mad again because apparently it's not enough that they just went on trial now they want like a conviction or something oh these people you know they just need to pull themselves up by their bootstraps so they know that people are going to get pissed and they know that people are going to take to the streets so what do they do they spend a shit ton of money uh, on barricades and, and, you know, riot gear and chemical weapons that uh, the, the UN considers it to be, um, it's not approved by the UN, right? And they attack protesters who are marching peacefully with their chants and all that stuff. They send agitators into the crowd. They'll put random, uh, un, you know, um, d uh, defunct police cars and then they'll and then there's examples of oh shit there's just a bunch of bricks here but there's no construction area in sight you know there's been evidence of that there's been evidence of 
uh, you know, uh, police cars lining up bricks out of the police car and setting it, you know, somewhere to entice people to engage in a riot. They'll break a window because the broken window theory is a real thing that people will, will utilize. And they and and you know corp, again corporate media doesn't talk about this the justice system doesn't talk about this they don't talk about how cops instigate this sort of stuff they don't talk about how cops are are more violent and they're and they're looking to antagonize the perp so that the perp goes you know if if they even twitch the wrong way they can they can take them down or what have you and you know. The trend is that they call the guard when they're about to make a shitty decision because they know it's a shitty decision. They know it goes against public will. They did that in Louisville. The grand jury made their decision and immediately the guard was already called in. The guard was called in the morning before the decision was made because they know what the decision is. They know that they're going to side with the cops. The, the, the one cop in Louisville got... Uh, one case of wanton destruction, I believe, was was what the charge was. He shot a door. I was like, uh-oh. You, you didn't even shoot the right door, bro. Now you got to go to prison. Maybe. I don't know. We'll get you out on good behavior. So there was a protest in Louisville, and they'd already called the National Guard for it. So this is what they do. This is the trend. Uh, and it's just, to, to me, it's just an acceptance that you are wrong. You fucked up. And now you're just, you're suppressing people from calling you out that you fucked up and, and, and calling attention to it. So the whole world knows that you fucked up. Not just that, but more often than not, the judicial system will side with the killer cops. The Supreme Court, which everybody touts, highest court in the land, man. It's so important, the highest court in the land. Qualified immunity cases, they they uphold them. They will not overturn anything about qualified immunity. Oh, it's going to make it so much harder for for cops to do their job if uh, if we if they're actually accountable for their actions. Oh man, it's so much harder for cops to unnecessarily uh, beat the shit out of slash kill people whenever they fucking feel like it because they're roided up fucking, you know, muscle bound rage monsters that are told and trained that everybody out there is the enemy. You're not protecting and serving, but you're in a battle. This is like a war against the citizens and everybody is out there to do awful, evil things. That's how they're trained to do. So psychologically, they look at everybody as the enemy. They will side with them 100% of the time. They will not overturn qualified immunity cases. They will not put accountability on these cops. So now they're like a fucking Steven Seagal movie and they're above the law. Because the judicial system is saying that's what they are. What you can do with that million dollars is put it into Chauvin or... Uh, not just a million dollars, but I also think it should be Chauvin's salary as well. Uh, but you take the salary from these killer cops, the amount of money that you would have saved, and you take that million dollars you want to spend in barricades and additional police equipment and all that crap, and you put it back into the community. You fund social programs. You fund after-school programs. You fund mental health services and mental health uh, programs. You help people come out of poverty. You you elevate people that are stuck in poverty. You elevate low-income communities with that kind of money. This is what the defund the police movement is all about. It's not about getting rid of the police. It's about restructuring it. It's about recognizing the history of policing comes from slave patrols. Inherently... Um, there is racism in the system because that's where it came from. It, it originated from racism. And it never got that poison out of the system. You elevate people that are stuck in poverty instead of just making them constant victims of militarized police. You have people like Joe Biden 
that come out and they say, oh, we want to give the cops more money so we can train them and we can train them to shoot people in the leg. Great. So you want to maim people. The problem isn't just that the cops are killing people. It's that they're killing innocent people. So now you, what you're going to do is it, you're, you're going to um, say they're trying to commit a crime. They shoot them in the leg. They have to get a ambulance call and they have to go to the hospital, get the bullet removed, wrap that wound up, stitch it up and whatnot and stay in the hospital for like three or four days. And then they come out and because of a wrongful conviction, the, the police have now charged an innocent person a couple hundred thousand dollars in medical debt. And are the cops going to be responsible for that medical bill? Absolutely not. They, they will fight it tooth and nail. They'll claim that they're just doing their jobs and the courts will agree. Because the courts are going to side with killer cops. The courts sat, side with these bad cops, these rotten apples. So what changes all that? Direct action. And what are they doing with the National Guard and, and, and spending all this money on precautionary measures, quote-unquote precautionary measures? They're trying to squash the one thing that can actually cause massive change, that has actually pushed them to take these, these issues seriously and do something about them. So, you know, now would not be the time to 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 get relaxed. Now would not be the time to um to to give in to those bullshit excuses. Now is not the time to make any of those excuses for the Democratic Party or the judicial system or the Supreme Court. Now is the time to look at the Supreme Court, and now is the time to look at all these parties that claim they're on the side of justice, that they claim they're on the side of, of good and, 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 and justice and equality, and fine, do it. Be on the side of those. Act as if you were, because we are. We're going to be out on the streets. We're going to be amplifying their voices. We're going to constantly keep talking about this. So I hope that people take to the streets in Minneapolis. I encourage you to take to the streets in Minneapolis. I know I have friends and viewers that in Minneapolis that watch this stuff. I hope you I hope you are safe and I hope that you don't get attacked by <laughs> these asshole cops. All right, I'm going to look at the comment here. Uh Johnny says, I believe in believe with free and fair elections, uh, we take a huge step in the right direction. Uh, I would agree with you there, but I'm I'm pretty I'm a, I'm a big sourpuss when it comes to electoral politics. I, I believe in more direct action uh, like strikes, like protests, like marches, like uh, a lot of the activism that we see in, in communities. Um, the discussion around police violence didn't come out of electoral politics. It came out of that direct action. In the 30s, the labor movement wasn't a part of an electoral process. They were an organized group of, uh, of, of people that came together because they were tired of being oppressed by a, uh, by, by a corporate political system. Um, now, a free and fair election can be a part of that, but uh, I I don't think you get you make you make massive change out of um, electoral politics. I mean, even FDR, if it wasn't for the amount of general strikes that we saw in the 30s and in the early 20s and in 1919 and all of these other times, it would have I don't think he would have really signed the Wagner Act, which gave unions enough power for about 10 years to to actually give people a decent livable wage to advocate for workers. You know, I, I, it, it just wouldn't have happened. And the reason it wouldn't have happened, uh, is because there wouldn't have been anybody on the streets fighting for it, you know, and I'm not, this is not a take up arms kind of situation. This is get organized and, and do a march and get a strike going, show them that the people on the ground are, are the ones that actually have the power. That's what happened in the 30s. That's what happened with this. The difference here is uh, the Democrats still ignored the, the Black Lives Matter movement. They still ignored the defund the police movement. The Republican used it as a weapons 
against the Democrats. But the Democrats basically said, no, 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 we kind of agree with the Republicans here. We're not going to defund the police. We're not going to do any of that sort of stuff outright as a party. They claim that so that's part of the reason why I'm like, you know, I, 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 I would agree with you, but I just don't think that's that's what's going to drive the large change. I think we need we need a different pair. We need people to. uh how do I even explain this? It's it's stuff that's in my head, but I don't know how to make it into words. Um, we need people to wake up and let go of party politics uh, and and stand for what they believe in um, and, and know that, you know, there's probably never going to be a po political party of any kind that truly uh, matches what you believe. And right now, there is no party that e even comes close to matching what I believe or what a lot of people believe in. Um, so that's, you know, I'm I'm pretty sour pussed on on electoral politics. Uh, I disagree. I, I believe by simply wearing uh, red and white on our bodies and our vehicles, uh, we'll s mention we'll send a much more powerful message that of a true blue powerful revolution are are you advocating for like we should try to flip the senate and house of representatives blue like we should turn states blue like that sort of stuff because that's never worked uh historically speaking that sort of stuff has never worked especially because the democrats are are have always been a corporatized party um and the republicans were kind of the party of the people for a little bit and then William McKinley came along and decided that, oh, this party needs money, so we'll just side with the industrialists and the corporations. And, and I think Teddy Roosevelt tried to pull them out, but uh, didn't succeed in doing so. Uh, and then Woodrow Wilson was kind of the nail in the coffin of, of, of turning the ship of this country to being what it was, to being what it is, rather. Um, yeah, I think I think direct action and amplification is the is is historically proven to to be the way that you drive real successful change, even legislative change. Um, yeah, that's that's. I can't I can't tell if you're being sarcastic or not, Johnny. Uh, now give them what they want. Have them tell us how how they will rule us in front of the oath takers. <laughs> Uh, I'm, I'm assuming you're being sarcastic here, uh, because that's exactly what happened with, with Biden is you just gotta, you, you, you just give him what he wants <laughs> and then everything will be okay. Uh, I'm assuming you're being, um, your sacrifices required each day, uh, no sarcasm. I, I, I disagree with you, Johnny. I don't, I don't think electoral politics is going to work because we've seen electoral politics, and how it works with with both parties and at the end of the day you know if if they were actually serious about movements like defund the police um if they were actually serious uh about criminal justice reform you know Derek Chauvin his trial wouldn't be delayed because his lawyers want to drop the charges against him um, if they were actually serious, they would be advocating for cops to take responsibility for what they've done. Uh, you're saying make everyone focus on power. Well, we are making everyone focus on power. That's what direct action does. Direct action, like strikes, like protests, and things of that sort, they do make people focus on power. It's the direction in which the power is going. What the protests last summer showed is that we have the power of it. We can drive that change. It's just that the politicians have ignored that. And, and, and the problem is that despite the fact that they ignored it, people were just so scared of Trump. They had the, they had the, uh, the, the, the Trump derangement syndrome that they, that they overlooked the fact that the Democrats were ignoring uh, their power. They, they overlooked the fact that the Democrats were ignoring what the will of the people was henceforth making it uh not really a democracy of sorts and i'll read this last comment here 
Uh, when they're concerned about making ends meet, they will be much more focused on the difference of powers. Uh, your kind in letting me speak. I'm not sure I understand what exactly you're getting to in that comment. When they are concerned about making ends meet, they will be at that much more focused on the difference of powers. You're, you're kind in letting me speak. Okay. Uh, no, I, I, I don't believe in, in, in censoring people and, and all that sort of, all that sort of jazz. Um, I think the difference in power is part of the focus. Um, yeah, I, but that's what that's what the focus I think is when you're talking about power. The focus ends up being in the difference of power. There's too much of a discrepancy in in power in and of itself. Um, I hope that kind of makes sense. But again, direct action shows where the true power lies, where, where, you know, if it is a true democracy, if it is a country that relies on, um, it relies on and makes decisions based on the pulse of the country, the beliefs of the, of the nation, the beliefs of the many rather than the few, then it wouldn't be running the way that it's running. Uh, that's why it's, we have to do something in terms of direct action to, to, to drive true and real change, uh, is, is sort of the way that I look at it. And I hope that that kind of gives you uh, at least an idea of, of where I'm coming from on this. Thank you so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed this content, uh, please make sure that you hit the like button, hit the share button, and make sure you're subscribed to my channel, whether it's on Rockfin, YouTube, or Facebook, especially Facebook and YouTube. They often uncensor pe uh, un unsubscribe people and they censor this content. So if you want to keep up to date, make sure you're subscribed. Hit that bell button so you get notifications of when I'm putting up new videos and when I am going live. I usually go live uh, on uh, Fridays and on Mondays. Uh, and if you want more information about a, a bunch of the other stuff that I do, uh, whether it's my Forkful of Noodles podcast, the Taboo Table Talk interview podcast, or the Road Reflections live streams, uh, make sure you go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A dot com. There you'll find past episodes of, uh, of various shows that I, uh, that I do, as well as information about when I'll be performing live virtual comedy shows the forkful of noodles live virtual comedy shows uh the dates and tickets will be available directly on my website but if you're also on financial stable ground you can help contribute to the show financially by making a one-time donation or becoming a sustaining member which gets you free tickets and bonus content and go to krishmohanhaha.com slash donate to to make any kind of financial contributions but if you can't it's not a necessity most of my stuff is is available for free and for everybody to enjoy. So again, go to krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A. -H 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 -A, and I hope to see you at the next video.